The Indian Act is a federal law that regulates the rights and status of First Nations peoples in Canada. It was first passed in 1876 and has been amended several times since then. The main purpose of the Act was to assimilate First Nations peoples into dominant Euro-Canadian society and culture. The Act has been widely criticized for violating the human rights and dignity of First Nations peoples and for undermining their self-government and sovereignty. I know that band No More is, you know, there's there's um, a lot of different things that you're doing, but one of the foundations is that, you know, Indigenous people have so many beautiful mm. cultural practices, um, and you know, in in our you know violent colonial history, a lot of those practices were banned. So can you think of, you know, particular practices that bring you to life and bring your boys to life? Um, that are so important and just describe them a little bit. For sure. So some of the things that were banned were our language and our ceremonial practices and even being with our family together. Um, my father was a residential school survivor and he told me stories of how he seen his grandparents um, partaking in cultural practices and they would have the RCMP and the Indian, the Indian agents on the reserve come and just ravish their ceremonies and take down the lodges and rip them out of their ceremonies. And to me, that that was disrupting our our prayers and our ceremony. So for me, it's very important that I go down to my community, and now it's a very sacred and secluded place where where we go. Um, no, it's not. It's not like promoted where you see a sign that says, here's the rain dance. No, we go with where our heart feels, where we're going to take place. And we do it in the bush now. So that will never, ever happen again. And it's become very sacred to us that we protect that peace and we protect our prayers. And um, we're all together in a family where, you know, we're very um, protecting each other and from outsiders from, from coming again and doing that because that was years of, of emotional damage that happened from my great grandparents and language was lost through the residential schools. I am the first generation to have not attended a residential school. So that means I do not speak my, my tongue, my Cree tongue, but I try very hard to say just different phrases and learn to say my name in Cree and learn to introduce myself in Cree and really make sure that those are being brought to life again and especially with my sons I teach them just different phrases and it's so cute seeing them seeing them say it back to me and I'm just like wow like you know I get to see the ancestors just praising that and being happy that I'm slowly bringing that back and someday I pray to be a fluent speaker so when I have grandkids just like my Kokum I'm able to speak to them in Cree and our people our people we were we were our family, you know, we were taken away from each other. You know, we were lost and we we um, we broke apart in some areas across Turtle Island. Now I'm able to reconnect with them and tell them about the people and the family and the ancestors that came back. And I'm able to sit with them and, you know, um, let them hold that space of grievance for them, th their own self and um, make them feel whole and letting them know that 
we have to stick together as a family and that's what our ancestors and our grandparents would want us to do and again they would be so proud of us to see how their lineage just grew and in hindsight it's just crazy to think that if they lost their life through residential school through world world ii um even just being indigenous all of those things that could have took away our family line it didn't and we're still here and we have to make it together and um you know bring each other love peace and turn that intergenerational trauma into intergenerational love and i'm very happy and fortunate to be able to do that my name's Ayana Testowich. I'm from Duncan First Nation Treaty 8 territory. My cookum and a few of my uncles, they went to 60s groups and residential schools and their generational trauma was put on to me and my siblings. So we went through abuse sometimes growing up and we went through uh, child services also. So it was a generational trauma for us. Well, what the government has done to us, I don't think it shouldn't have, I don't think it shouldn't have been done in the first place, but back then we had no choice because of the government saying us natives had no voice. We can talk to local elders and they can tell us stories and lead us down the right path to go down to in life. I love that I get to dance and I get to help people teach them about my culture and the beautiful Mother Earth. For Indigenous people for the future, I see us claiming our land back one by one slowly and us getting together and being one strong nation. I am proud. I'm just, I'm glad that I get to live every day and that the creator I know and my elders are looking down on me always and they're proud. Gwe, Deloisi Cassandra Aklea Wee Gespega Wagi Akwigi Anishinaabega Ki. My name is Cassandra Barnabe, and I belong to the people of the last land, also known as Listigush Wigma First Nation, in Quebec. I am currently residing on Anishinaabega Ki with my family. I am Mi'kmaq of the Wabanaki Confederacy, with ancestral responsibilities to the land, air, and water. I am a multidisciplinary artist. I am also a mother with a strong passion for Mi'kmaq language revitalization, Landa's pedagogy, and arts. Growing up, I was very fortunate to have my parents as fluent Mi'kmaq language speakers. My first language was Mi'kmaq, although I did not learn about our culture and traditions until I attended middle school in Listovich. In culture class, we were taught medicines, beading, moose hair tufting, and porcupine quill work. We celebrate each new season by honoring winter, summer, spring, and autumn. This allows us to celebrate the joy of each season coming by honoring the beauty and the change and the abundance each new season has to offer. As a multidisciplinary artist, I am fortunate to dance fancy shawl and to showcase my dancing in the powwow circle. I did not grow up attending powwows every weekend, but as a new mother, I want to immerse my children in our ceremonies and our culture. With my husband and family, we are reclaiming our traditions by actively participating in our community, by working with knowledge keepers and learning and attending sweat lodge ceremonies, and most recently, our children's walking out ceremonies. Not so long ago, the Indian Act banned ceremonies, such as the potlatch and Sundance. Indigenous people were arrested for gathering and practicing their ceremonies, which forced many into hiding from the government and law officials. The effects of this outlaw on ceremony are still felt today. I didn't grow up attending powwows every weekend because spirituality was never discussed in our home. We didn't smudge or pray, nor did we attend sweat lodge ceremonies. Our ceremonies are being told by the old ones and we are practicing them today to ensure their survival. It brings me immense pride to learn new teachings and to share them with our children. Our children will greatly benefit from att attending cultural gatherings because they are surrounded by community and learning to dance is such a great gift for the next generation.
The Indian Act was created to destroy indigenous people, but as you can see, the strength and resilience is stronger than ever. My message to all of you is to practice your culture. You may not know how to dance or speak your language. You might not even know how to sing traditional songs or bead and sew. Reach out to the community and learn. Ask your elders. Now is your time to bring back your culture so the new generations can learn from you. Do it for the ones who couldn't do it and do it for our future generations. Our story is what makes us stronger. You can take courses to learn more about Indigenous peoples. You can join community events such as attending powwows and round dances. We c- connect with your culture by sitting with your elders and talking to them. Learn from them and let them know it's okay to share their teachings. In more recent years, you will see youth from all over the country learning how to take part in their culture by attending powwows, round dances, and being out on the land. Learning how to do a variety of crafts such as moccasin making and beading. It is really never too late to learn. When you're out in the land, you know, a lot of people think Saskatchewan is just flat, but they often forget about the valley, you know, the beautiful scenery you see when you're driving down there and how fe- how you feel so free going down there like you're connected. I would also say that there's just a rich vibrance of all of the, the Sioux people, the, the Cree people, the Ojibwe people, and how we really took up that space because in a lot of ways we weren't able to live on that land and vegetate on that land. And we have those cold, brisk winters, and we were able to survive on that land and hunt the buffalo. Um, I'm super proud that we still continue that to this day, and we're able to, you know, survive just like our people did. Um, I would also say that when you go down to the grounds during the Treaty 4 uh, gathering, you just feel the ancestors and you feel the drums, and it's just beautiful to be there. And you just feel at love and you feel the community, and it's just an amazing experience. When you, you drive down, even in the, in the fall time, you see all of the beautiful trees just turn a nice orange and you feel the warmth and you just feel connected like you're supposed to be there. And you, you, it's a place of learning, really. So absolutely love that land and the landscape. It's beautiful. I really like the language, going to the reserve and hearing all the elders and all the adults just sit around and talk. I just sit there and listen even though I don't really understand what they're saying. I understand you might have moments where you doubt yourself and you question a lot of things, but just go all in, try and get into a lot of programs as you can. Try and go to ceremony like row dances and powwows are considered as a ceremony, so like start going to those and Listen to all the elders that are willing to give you their their knowledge.